I never realized this until I seriously started minimizing my life, but I straight up used to be a hoarder. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. And today I wanna to talk about, this is just kind of like a fun chat really. Let's talk about how I used to be a hoarder and how I became a minimalist in these specific areas. This video always calls for a disclaimer, I feel like. This is in no way meant to make anybody feel bad or feel like they themselves are a hoarder. This is a um, label I've given myself, so I feel like I'm free to use it. But don't feel bad, this is just meant to be kind of fun and hopefully give you just a few things to think about if you're trying to minimize as well. And I think it's a fun conversation, so go ahead and leave your comments down below of things that maybe you used to hold on to that you don't anymore. I used to hold on to every single birthday, Christmas, Valentine's Day card I ever got, ever. Even if it just said, love grandma, like no message, no sentiment whatsoever. I would hold on to it because I felt like for some reason this was giving away something just so sentimental, so irreplaceable that I had to keep it. So I had absolutely boxes and bags and bins full of cards that I had received from the time I was born until my 30s. Guys, this was too much. So a project that I'm looking forward to doing is, and I went through these cards already and I got rid of 90%, maybe more, 95%. And I just kept a few. I'm going to be making a binder that I can actually sit down and look through and read through messages that I really, really wanna keep and have. So I used to hoard cards. I don't anymore. I used to buy costume jewelry up the wazoo. I used to hoard it. I would buy it, it didn't matter where it came from. <laughs> I would just see it, think it was amazing and bring it home. The problem with this for me is that I didn't actually go through and get rid of anything. I just kept bringing it in and bringing it in until I had accumulated this massive amount of jewelry that to be honest in the end, it just became a big tangled Ball. It was overwhelming and in the end I realized that I only stuck with a few select favorite pieces anyway. So in my journey to minimalism, I actually went through and decluttered most of all of my jewelry and just kept the pieces that I wore. And it turns out they weren't that big and chunky after all. The ones that I do gravitate towards are a little bit more classic. So why did I keep buying those chunky pieces thinking I was gonna wear them? I think this next one is probably one that a lot of people can relate to. And that is just clothing, clothing that I didn't wear, clothing that didn't fit me, clothing that was old, worn out and tired. I would just keep it in my closet for, I don't know why. I guess I thought maybe eventually I'll like it again or maybe I'll fit into it again. And in the end, it just completely cluttered up my space. So I got rid of most of my clothes and I just decided to keep classic pieces. Now I am going to make a confession. I did keep one grocery bag full of clothes that I thought I might be able to fit into after I had my third baby and I'm on my way there. So I feel like it's definitely smart to keep it because I don't wanna to have to go out and buy all those things again. They're clothes that are in really great condition and I know I'm gonna get there. So I feel like that's worthwhile, but everything else I just let go. And I don't know why we tend to hold on to clothing. Like why? If you know why, <laughs> let me know because I, I cannot figure it out. So before becoming a mother, before starting YouTube, I was actually a school teacher and I taught first and third grades absolutely loved it and I thought I had to keep every single thing from my teaching days in my storage. So when we went through and minimized, I found literally thousands of items that I had used as a teacher. Papers, books, I mean, I had even kept like paper clips. It was insane. And I did go through and get rid of almost all of it. Now, I do think there is a good chance I will go back to teaching at some point. So I kept my favorite things, books that I felt like, oh my gosh, it doesn't matter when I'm teaching or even if I'm teaching my own kids or a classroom full of students, this is great material. So I kept a few books and then a couple sentimental items, but everything else I felt was completely replaceable or things that I really wouldn't want if I went back into the classroom again. So things from my previous career, which really does feel like another lifetime, I just went ahead and got rid of. Who remembers 
my pantry. The pantry from the old house. <laughs> the pantry that was literally a monster madhouse. It was so terrifying to go in there. It was full of mold and crumbs and ants. I didn't tell you guys about that at the time, but there were bugs in there. It was insane <laughs> what I was doing, how I was living. And I just have to look back and say, you know what, it's okay. I've, I've moved forward, I've made a step forward. I'm not gonna look back and feel bad at my like state that I was living in. It just was a process of steps. But my pantry, I'm never gonna let get like that again. Knock on wood, that's my goal. That is my plan, to keep my pantry under control because what I realized is that a cluttered pantry equals wasted food, no matter how you slice it. So I'm trying really hard not to let that happen again. And it's been almost a year since I had a disaster of a pantry and I haven't had one since. So I'm really crossing my fingers that I've crossed over a threshold and I'm not going back. So under my sink in the bathroom, I used to hoard, collect, lotions. I would hold on to these. I would not use them. I would just keep them. I don't know why. That's the thing. I think about all this stuff and I'm like, why did I do that? And I think it's just because I didn't realize there was another way, but now I know. So I don't do that anymore. But I used to hold on to all these lotions, lotions that I thought stunk, lotions that I think didn't work, but I felt like, oh my gosh, I spent money. I spent $5. Like if I give it away, then I'm wasting the money. It doesn't really work like that, I realize. The money's already spent, there's nothing I can do. At this point, it's just costing me more because it's causing me anxiety, this clutter, it's more to clean, it's more to think about. It's all this space that could just be freed up in my home, not necessarily for other things, but just my home was suffocating and I feel like letting it breathe kind of opened up like my mind. I feel like I am, I'm able to breathe now. So I'm really, really glad that I don't do that anymore. So what I do now is I'll get my favorite brand, the one that I know smells really good and that works really well. And I'll just buy one when I use it up, I buy another one and that has worked so much better. It has saved me so much clutter, so much time cleaning and so much money in the end because really, if I just held on to something that I wasn't using, it was wasted money, whether it was in my cupboard or whether it was in the garbage, it didn't matter. So I've just let that stuff go. So I also used to hoard journals and I just, think they're so cute. Even to this day, I'll go down at the aisle at maybe Home Goods or somewhere and I'll just look at these journals and I'm like, they're so cute. But the difference is, is I used to buy them all and bring them home and now I don't do that. So one thing that I've realized too with journaling is that it's better to just have one journal, fill it up and get another one. Because the problem is what I did is I would end up filling a fourth of like 20 different journals and now what am I supposed to do? I have all these random, pages and all these different journals that are now this huge pile. So what I do now is I just have one journal. When it's full, I get another one. And I've just really tried to like compact. What I've done is if I have a journal that was mostly full, I will keep it. And then with the other ones, I just kind of went through and skimmed and just thought, do I want these memories and these notes? Some things really weren't that meaningful to me, so I felt fine going ahead and getting rid of it, but I'm just really glad that I don't do this anymore because books, like, they take up a lot of space. All right, you're gonna have to let me know in a comment if you remember when I used to hoard makeup. I used to do this. It was like my favorite thing ever. I would go out and I would buy all the makeup. I would buy new eyeshadow palettes, blushes, thousands of shades of lipstick, it seems, and I would just hold on to them. These things, they expire. They don't even keep most of them for more than a year. So this was a huge waste of space in my house and a really in the end, a big waste of money for me. So I have pared down my makeup collection to about 5% of what I used to have. Really thinking about it, it's probably more like 3%. I really just kept the things that I love, the things that I wear on a regular basis, and I just let that hoarding habit go. I hope this video was fun, gave you a couple things to think about. I would love to hear what maybe some of your habits are now, or maybe habits are that you've changed, that you feel really good about, or things that you want to change. Seriously, let's chat in the comments. Thank you so much for being a part of my day today, and I will see you soon. Bye.